okay so as we complete other topics um uh, coming to templates um there won't be much questions on templates because templates is a, a very common stuff um uh, in angular right so without template we cannot do anything um templates basically like in angular uh, they gave like uh, around 3 to 4 uh, directives to handle um, templates but that doesn't mean um, angular support for template is um, in only those those directives right so basically when you see um, in component when you see this template you are right so this is a this is basically um, a template right the same way yeah. uh, you can put inline template also like this uh, using this back ticks uh, instead of template url you can uh, give the template and then you can write uh, your inline template here if your template is small okay so the, these two are again like uh, uh, templates okay you don't have to use uh, um, ng container or ng template or ng uh, uh, the template outlet right so we don't have to use those tags uh, especially so so de de definitely definitely they won't ask about um, uh, these things uh, especially but uh, in overall templates topic uh, they might ask about um, the ng template okay what is ng template and how we can use and what is, what is ng container and how can we use that and after that what is ng content okay so let me let me give a brief overview of these three topics uh, and then we move on to the uh, template outlet. So basically, ng template is um, it's like you know um, template container. Okay, it will it will have a reusable template, and uh, that template you can assign a reference. Okay, you can assign uh, a reference uh, name to it, and then you can reuse that uh, reference name uh, wherever you want. Uh, you want you want to reuse the template in, in the same page. Uh, uh, or you want to take reference of that um, template, ng template in the TypeScript class and you want to use it in some model pop up, right? It's up to you. But um, the overall idea of uh, ng template directive is to um, make certain certain uh, piece of HTML code reusable, okay? So basically, you can write reusable templates. So, uh, for example, how can I how can I do that right? So if if you if you take the basic ng if else example, uh, this is the ng if syntax right. So first first will be a condition. Here I I hard coded as false, but normally it will be either true or false or some expression which will uh, return uh, true or false at the end right. If that is false in case uh, in this case it is false here, so it will go to the else content okay. The else, um, the else section of the uh, ng if is um, a template reference variable. Okay, so how can you assign a variable to a template uh, ng template? This is how you can assign. Okay, you can put a hash uh, prefix and then you can give any name, just like any variable name. Okay, then that will become a template reference. Okay, so internally Angular will create a variable, uh, a class uh, object of type template ref okay template ref is a class uh, given by angular so this will basically uh, a template ref uh, uh, object so now you can access this object using this reference okay this is the reference we are giving here if this condition is false then uh, it will it will look for this uh, ng template reference variable inside that page if it finds it then it will try to render that content okay so uh, the other uh, thing about this ng template is it will not uh, render this uh, directive itself okay it will render what is the content in in between this uh, uh, opening and close tags mm -hmm. it will not render this one okay uh, for example if we take this example uh, the the ng if one if this is con this condition is true right it will render the entire div tag not only this this content uh, in between uh, these tags, right? So it will try mm -hmm. to render the entire uh, tag, div tag. But in ng template uh, case, it will render the content between these tags. It will not render the uh, ng template uh, directive itself. Okay, so that is the uh, another important thing we should uh, know about ng template. And uh, so, what is what is a uh, uh, um, ng container then? Okay, and before that, right? So, uh, 
uh, Angular basically uses ng template internally for all the structural directives like ng if, ng for, ng switch. Okay, so it will it will create. Um, for example, here we are using ng if, right? So it will create a wrapper ng template on top of uh, uh, this this directive. Okay, it will put all this content which I selected into a ng template internally. And then whenever that condition is true, then it will try to render the inside content. Okay, that is that that will be done uh, internally by the Angular. Okay, so it will happen for all the structural directives. Wherever you see the star there, those are called structural directives, right? So all the for all the uh, all those uh, structural directives, um, this ng template will be used internally. And coming to ng container, okay. So the main difference between ng template and ng container is ng template will not be rendered automatically it it has to be used somewhere okay here in this case we are using it here right using the reference variable if you, if you let's say if you are not using this uh, with this reference variable then this will be there on the page but it will not be displayed to a user okay whatever you write it will be hidden until unless you assign a reference variable and use it somewhere like this this content will not be displayed okay only when it is referenced like this, that time only the content between this uh, ng template tags will be displayed. But whereas ng container is uh, uh, plain and simple, just like a plain span tag or a plain, uh, 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 sorry, a plain uh, uh, div tag or paragraph tag, right? So whatever content you put inside this ng container will be uh, displayed by default. Okay. So what is the advantage of that then? Uh, if you are using um, ng container, there must be some advantage. Right? What is the advantage? If it is displaying as is, so there is no advantage. Right? But but most of the times, let's say you want to have a uh, if else condition and you don't want to use the uh, div, div tag. Okay. So div, div tag is a block element, right? So it's a block element means it will reserve a, a line in, in HTML page. Okay. So paragraph tag also a uh, block tag. Okay, the difference between block tag and inline tag is block tag um, will always reserve a line. Even if you put empty line also, it will it will take a line like this. Here the empty space is coming right, the single line. So it will it will basically block a uh, separate line. Whereas inline tags will be displayed um, as part of the uh, content. Okay, it will not uh, take a separate line. For example. If you take this um, uh, this line, these two lines, right? If you take these two lines, if you put uh, this content text inside a span tag, then uh, the content will be displayed like this only. So there will be no difference because the span tag will not affect the content. But whereas you put this content uh, word inside a paragraph tag, then it will take separate line, okay? The above will come in one line, uh, content will come in uh, second line and from this uh, this word will uh, come in third line okay that's how uh, the block tags will um, preserve a line separately the same way div also a, a, a um, block tag in in some situation we don't want to use that uh, uh, blocking tags or any any other other tags for that matter we want to reduce some uh, some dom elements okay while rendering it will create dom elements for all these things right so you we want to reduce in those cases instead of div here we can use ng container okay so mm -hmm. and uh, ng container will not affect any styles will not affect the dom structure it is it is just like you know a plain thing okay and uh, uh, if you use that then uh, only content in between the uh, container tag will be displayed Okay. Mm. Now, um, now here is the example. Here we are using ng if and ng for. Okay. Um, if this details is not null. Okay. If, uh, if we are giving like this, the, the condition is this detail section uh, details uh, object is not null. Then uh, use the ng for, and uh, until all the elements, just try to print the content okay content uh, element of the info variable now uh, what will happen here uh, because we are using two two uh, structural directories on single uh, div it will basically throw an error okay we cannot use that so in that case what we can do is we separate these two things okay we separate two things first div uh, look for the ng 
and the second div look for the uh, ng4 okay it will iterate okay second uh, div will iterate now what will happen uh, in case it let's say in, uh, de uh, the details object has more than one value okay some let's say five values then uh, this condition will become true that means this tag will be added to the dom and then it will come here and because we have five elements it will try to add five div elements here okay total how many elements we have one here and five here six elements mm -hmm. But uh, we don't want to add uh, this extra uh, div, okay? Uh, if this is uh, the fur is coming, that's fine. But we don't want to use the uh, first div. Then what we can do is we can do uh, ng container and ng details. And the inside that we can use the for loop as is. Now what will happen? Mm -hmm. If this is condition is true, it will not render this tag, okay? This uh, the the this dummy tag will be uh, removed from the DOM structure. And then only five tags we can see, five due tags we can see with the content. Okay. That is much cleaner mm -hmm. compared to this solution. Okay. So that is the reason we we need uh, ng container. Okay. You can you can use ng container like anything, like you can use uh, as many number of times as you need inside your template. Uh, nothing will affect. Okay. But whereas if you use due tags, then let's say if you are if you are having some let's say ten empty due tags, then there will be ten lines of empty space will be reserved for those uh, dummy uh, tags. Okay, and unnecessary alignment issues will come. So we we have to avoid those things. That's the reason. Sometimes we 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 have to use ng container. And uh, the last one is ng content. Okay, so ng content is used mainly for content projection. Okay, uh, what is what is content projection? Let's say you have a parent um, uh, parent uh, component and you have a child component, okay? And you have to pass a certain section of L, uh, uh, HTML to your uh, child component, okay? Uh, this is not data sharing, okay? Uh, uh, this is this this example look like data sharing, but this is not data sharing. Data sharing is something that. Um, uh, user pass data or data coming from backend will be passed from one component to one component another component mm -hmm. so that is called data sharing but this is like you know you are projecting some html content but you don't want to render it in the parent tag but you want to render it in the uh, child uh, uh, component okay from parent component to child component so in that cases we share the html uh, we, we send the html as a uh, input to the uh, child component, but not data. Okay, data. It's not data sharing. Um, how can we achieve that? Let's say, let's say uh, we have an example, right? So, uh, so far, wherever we see in uh, Angular, right? So far, what we saw, we when, when once we create a component, we use that component selector as a tag to use that uh, component, right? It's like mm -hmm. a, uh, let's say child is our component and how we can write app child and then close the app child here itself right we don't put anything in between just like a div tag we put content yeah. in between right the same way we don't put anything in between the uh, the component uh, tag selectors yeah. yeah component selectors so here uh, with the ng content this comes into the picture okay ng content um, you can send this uh, any content like this Unless until it is being used in the assume that this is uh, this is a uh, parent uh, uh, HTML, right? So this is a parent component at HTML, okay? And we are using app child component inside our parent component at HTML. And uh, what we are doing, we are we are uh, adding a development here. And uh, uh, even if you try also, now this content will not be rendered. It will not be displayed in the UI, okay? So if you just put like this, nothing will happen. Only app child will be rendered, or this content will be ignored altogether. Okay. But how can you use that? How can you render this one, right? So go to your child component.html and add whatever content. If there is a more HTML, you can add. But wherever you want to display this content, you can use the ng content type. Okay. This is ng content directive. So mm -hmm. what will happen in the child element? uh this will dis display definitely because it doesn't have any strings attached right so this will this is independent tag this will display and after that whatever content you put in your parent between these two tags uh, the child tag 
will be coming and it will be uh, displayed here okay okay so that is the use of ng content i think i told the example uh, question answer uh, example right so mm. you have a child component and uh, you have styles for the question uh, question uh, uh, part and you have styles defined for the uh, answer part uh, but that question answer uh, thing will be rendered in your child component and your parent component will send uh, what is the question to display what is the answer to display okay in separate separate uh, uh, sections and th those two will go and displayed in the uh, the child section so here what we are doing is we are reusing all the uh, styles css styles and uh, uh, some part of the component uh, html child component html for all the question answers okay the question and answer html will be, will be uh, passed from the parent component but uh, rendering will be happening in your uh, child component okay so how can we send multiple sections of html so here we saw only one case right one example you are passing uh, content between this uh, this element uh, this uh, component and then we are displaying okay if you don't put uh, uh, any name or if you don't uh, if you just add the, the plain ng content then it will take the uh, html directly and it will display but if you have more 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 than one section so what you can do is you can basically You can basically assign um, names like this for the h1 tag uh, i'm assigning a name input for h2 tag i'm saying uh, form field and for st i'm giving this thing now in my um, a child component what i can do is uh, i can mention what are all the uh, sections to be displayed okay so here what i'm telling display input and form field both inside here so now what will happen content one content two will become here like this like this example okay it doesn't have to be this way uh, this is the some some uh, syntax uh, separated by comma but normally if you want to show only input part what you can do is ng content select equals to, you can remove this entire thing and just put input and then close the ng content and in the second ng content tag you can write and then select equals to form field and then close the ng content so first uh, ng content tag will be replaced with the first uh, um, uh, h1 tag and the second ng content uh, um, tag will be uh, replaced with the second uh, h2 tag okay so that's how you can basically reuse in different different sections okay so any any questions so far no i'm good actually okay so this is the three things uh, mainly inside angular um, templates okay and uh, one more thing is uh, we have uh, some uh, directory called ng template outlet okay so the main use of ng template outlet is to render templates okay let's say you define uh, uh, you define uh, ng template in your uh, template file html file and you want to render it so so far we saw one example right ng if else so in the else section we are able to render the ng template but there are other ways also okay so the other way is using the ng template outlet okay we have this right so that means it's a structural directive okay we can basically manipulate the structure of the html that's the reason the star is added here now mm -hmm. we are using ng container why we are using ng container here because it will not affect any styles of the uh, the page okay it will not uh, uh, disturb the styles of the page so we can use div also here but uh, that is not uh, advisable okay we are using ng container and we are saying ng template outlet equal to the template one okay this is the variable name we are giving just like how we give for the uh, ng if else section right so mm -hmm. here we can give that just template name um you can have more templates also uh based on whatever you need you can give it here and uh and we can reuse the template anywhere we want okay so uh this is a div example this is ng container example let's say you can have um another ng container and you can same give the same thing the same template will be rendered two times 
okay so this is also kind of uh, uh, reusing so uh, so ng template outlet is basically to display the ng template uh, wherever you want exactly Using... exactly exactly yeah. so basically ng why we put uh, content inside ng template because the template which we are putting here is a uh, probably a reusable template okay mm -hmm. you might have a um, uh, a card where you are displaying uh, some some advertisement or something but you want to display same advertisement two three places in the page okay in that case what we can do we can put all that advertisement related html inside the uh, ng template and we give a reference uh, variable to it and wherever we want to show this template we can uh, use like this okay so this this template will be reused multiple times so here i'm just showing one time uh, but you're gonna basically uh, put wherever you want multiple times same thing the entire template will be reused so if you don't have this one, then how we can do? We have to, again, copy paste all this HTML in all the places where we want to show that uh, advertisement, right? So here it is a single line, but let's say you have uh, 50 lines of HTML code. So that is kind of duplication, right? So we have to avoid that. So how we, how we can avoid that? We put the same template in uh, ng template, and then wherever we need, we just uh, use like this. Okay, and uh, and we can basically pass uh, data to um, this uh, template outlet, ng template outlet. Okay, so sometimes what will happen? You will have your template, and inside that some some sections might change. Okay, some name uh, or uh, um, some 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 part will change. Okay, that part will be basically coming from a component uh, or some some database okay doesn't matter from where the data is coming but uh, the template entire template will be same but uh, some places you have to replace um, the the name okay assume that is a greeting um, paragraph where you say uh, welcome and you show username and then uh, yeah that's it you say like uh, welcome username um and that's it and the username part is dynamic part okay always we have to uh, show the username dynamically for each user so for that we can do uh, we can basically um, create a ng template uh, directive and then here we can say uh, um, welcome welcome and then in the user section we can basically pass a dynamic variable so how we can do that so while defining while defining ng template, you can basically create a variable like this. Let hyphen value equals value. And uh, this value you can you can use here. Okay. This one. This is like this is kind of a, a reference. Okay. And this is a value coming from uh, wherever you are using that template. And that value you can basically put it here. Okay. So uh, welcome and username the username part is dynamic so here is a simple example right so value received from parent and what is the value here we're uh, uh, interpolating it so how we can pass that value then so we have to along with the ng template uh, outlet so this is the template name we have to add another uh, attribute okay uh, add, uh, another attribute directive it is called ng template outlet context context means data okay our ng template outlet context and in that you can send uh, an object and uh, with the same uh, same uh, variable name okay so you are sending value equal to uh, value 1000 and the same value will be passed here and same value will be displayed here okay let's say you want to pass some different value then copy paste this section and then uh, send this uh, change to 100 then, okay? So it will display two templates. The first template is P, okay? Uh, forget about the ng template tag, okay? This will not be rendered, it will not be displayed. In the UA, we see value received from the parent is uh, 1000 for the first uh, instance. And for the second instance, we'll show value received from the parent is 100, okay? 
Now the template is changing based on what we are uh, passing here from the uh, ng template outlet. And these two are dependent, okay? When you use this, then only you'll be able to use this. Otherwise, you cannot use this thing uh, independently. Okay. The alternate is um, in the same uh, line itself, uh, in the template outlet line itself. First part is your template name, and you put a semicolon here, and then you can basically pass context like this context colon and your object. Okay, so either use this one or this one, uh, both are same. There's no difference. Okay. And uh, in order to pass more than one value, you can just uh, give your um, uh, reference variable. Okay, let name and the name variable, let message, message variable. As I said, we have to use this reference and this reference inside the template. Okay, here we are using name and here we are using message okay and uh, this one must match these variables from the uh, outlet context uh, the name that you give here must be matching this and the name you give here must be matching the right side value okay so now what will happen uh, in place of this uh, this part will come dear what is the name guest dear guest comma welcome to our side okay dear wish comma welcome to our side will be displayed at the end end of uh, the execution of this code okay so now how can we pass an object okay till here we are passing single variables or like uh, independent variables this is also a single variable of num uh, type number and uh, these two are also separate separate single variables okay but if you want to pass an object then uh, the same way how we handle the single variable set, right? we say let person equal person and person will have uh, again uh, some other fields, right? Like name and message. But while passing, you have to pass like an object. Here we said name variable as a string, okay, as a string. But here person variable is as an object. And this object will come and sit here and you can reference name variable this one directly with the person dot name and this one with the person dot message mm -hmm. and uh, that is the template outlet so now uh, 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 in the first uh, section we covered how we can uh, like we we can basically access template reference variable in class also right so in order to access the template uh, in the class what we have to do is we have to use the view child uh, decorator. Okay. We are saying in the greeting component, look for a child with the name, this reference, uh, this, this uh, reference uh, name. Okay. So this is a template. This is the inline template I wrote for the better uh, readability. And uh, in the view child, we are looking for this uh, greeting template reference. Okay. A greeting template reference is given here and uh, this is the our actual template now the reference to this will come and uh, sit in here mm -hmm. okay greeting reference this is of type template reference okay okay now you can basically uh, do whatever you want if you want to show it in a model pop up or you want to show it in separate uh, uh, somewhere then you can do it or if you want to give this reference the greeting reference uh, inside the uh, ng template outlet, right? So the, the template outlet. So here also you can give that variable. Okay. It necessarily, we cannot, uh, un, uh, I think, um, it's not necessary to uh, use the variable reference from here only. So you can give, uh, sorry, here only. So uh, where is the template? Yeah, here only. So, so we can basically uh, look for the template one inside your uh, component and then assign to some variable in that component and that variable name you can put here, okay? So that also mm -hmm. it will uh, work. Only thing ng template outlet cares about is whatever value you are giving, that must be template ref type, okay? The template ref type, this one. 
whether you use directly from the template itself or whether you use view child to get the reference in your class and then um, use it so it doesn't matter as long as you are passing uh, any variable of template reference type the ng template uh, ng uh, template out uh, template outlet will work okay yeah this will work so that is that's, that's how we basically uh, get reference of uh, any template if you have one more template there you can copy paste this line again and just ch change the uh, template reference variable which uh, which you assigned for the second uh, template okay mm -hmm. and uh, so we are talking about reusing the template so far right so how can we reuse uh, assume that uh, i have three sections okay this section 1 section 2 section 3 and in these three places i want to show my company logo okay just before uh, uh, about company information i want to show my logo and uh, just uh, before the contact us section i want to show and in the footer also i want to show uh, my logo so instead of copy pasting all this like three times what i can do is i can create a ng template i can put all the content inside that and then assign a uh, reference variable template reference variable and then here i can use ng container so that it will not disturb the um, the structure of the page or the styles of the page and then i use ng template outlet and then i just assign the company logo reference here so now this content will be rendered here it will be replaced here and then here also same thing will happen it will replace and here also same thing will happen so almost how much line how many lines like four four uh, lines of code right so four into three around two lines of code we reduce to three lines this one this one and mm -hmm. this one okay so we, we wrote only once and then we are using uh, reusing it everywhere else okay so yeah i think we covered the uh, template section so any doubts here like uh, no. okay no. okay so then let's move on to the uh, authentication so as we covered uh, guards in routing right so basically uh, mm -hmm. guards we used to uh, protect routes okay so um it is straightforward only thing is you have to configure and you must know how to uh, configure a guard okay um, there won't be much questions from guards as well but uh, it is good to have knowledge on that uh, how, how can you create a guard how can you configure that okay um, the, the creation part is this one ng uh, guard and uh, guard name and it will create this entire thing and here you will write your logic and make sure you return true or false if you return false it will not go to that root even uh, user try to access manually in the browser it will not go to that uh, root if it returns true then it will go to that root whenever you try to access that okay, that is the uh, uh, so you can protect the roots and how can you configure that uh, this uh, uh, guards in your roots right we have a can activate section the can activate section basically takes an array array of guards basically you can give multiple uh, guards uh, for a single url and then you can mention your guards if all guards returns true then only the user will be able to see that page if any single guard returns false then it will not go to that page mm -hmm. yeah okay and uh, the the next thing is uh, you can expect uh, uh, from this topic is how many types of guards we have okay angular will provide uh, like couple of guards so how many guards we can basically have so first one is can activate valid saw right the second is can activate child okay so as the name says uh, it, it it is just to uh, activate any child uh, roots okay we have we can have a uh, child roots also right so uh, for each uh, root we'll have uh, child roots so in order to activate child roots, we can use this one. And uh, the can load will be used for um, uh, loading um, 
modules okay visa are lazy loaded modules right so lazy loaded modules basically will load when user try to click on uh, certain link or certain feature then only on demand we load a uh, we load the module into the browser okay so the can mm. load will basically uh, handle those scenarios in lazy loaded um, lazy loaded uh, modules when when user try to access but that user doesn't have permissions uh, right permissions to view that uh, page or that that module okay so that module is nothing but a page somewhere right so if if you try, user tries to access this, that page uh, angular will try to download that module code on demand but if you put this can load uh, guard then it will execute this can load dag and see if it returns true or false just like can activate if it returns true then the request will go to server and it will try to download the module if the uh, can load returns false then it will not go to the back end to fetch that uh, module okay so that is the use of can load and uh, can deactivate okay so the can deactivate is interesting thing because um, sometimes when you are working on some website then you try to close the tab uh, it will show some pop up saying that you did not save this content uh, if you close this forcefully the content will be uh, lost have you seen this kind of pop up yeah. somewhere if you try yeah. to edit something and you, you try to move away from that side it will complain that mm -hmm. your uh, your edit is in progress and it will not allow you to uh, move forward it will show some yes. alert so in those cases we can basically use this can deactivate okay can deactivate will be executed when user trying to close the tab and if this can deactivate returns true that means uh it, it will be uh rem i mean you can the close action will be success but if um, it returns false then um it is we uh, we can show some pop up there uh, in that in that section we can have a l section we can show uh, user is trying to uh, move away from the, this page uh, are you sure because there is some edited uh, content is there okay those kind of scenarios we can use deactivate and the same way uh, uh, we have another uh, guard called resolve resolve is not a guard actually resolve is used to preload the content preload means let's say you 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 come to a uh, certain page okay uh, you, you come to certain page and there you want to show information very quickly to the user okay now what will happen normally if you go from one page to another page once you go to that page you read a path parameter or query parameter and then uh, you try to call backend api and get the content and display okay that is a normal flow but using resolve you you before going to the page itself you you fetch that content and you give to that page okay this will be a little faster mm -hmm. so now now let's see uh, each thing so can activate we already saw right so we we don't have to uh, again look into this and let's go to the second one can activate child okay so can activate child uh, how we can use that uh, here is your parent uh, uh, root information and here are your children uh, roots two roots you have and uh, this can activate is for the parent root itself like the whole root okay so mm -hmm. for the whole root we have a single authentication guard and the same way for activating the child also you want to have a guard okay it can be same guard or it can be a different guard doesn't matter but uh, based on your requirement, if it is different guard, then you can create a different guard and then uh, assign it here. Otherwise, you can use the same guard. So when user trying to access these child roots, that means dashboard slash, assume that ID is one, okay? Dashboard slash one. Then this guard will be called. If you try to access dashboard, then this card will be called. If you try to uh, edit, uh, I mean, uh, if you try to access this one, dashboard slash one slash edit, then again, the child uh, guard will be executed. 
an accurate child. Okay, so that is the difference. So main main difference is can activate is for parent, can activate child is for child roots. And the third one is can load. Can load is just basically for uh, lazy loaded modules, right? If your modules are lo uh, loaded lazily, uh, then uh, that time if you have write permissions, then the can load will return true. If you don't have write permissions, the can load will return false. So how can you basically, uh, I mean, put it in Victor Kali, right? The can load will, uh, there's a can load method you have to implement and uh, that will basically, you have to configure inside the root and then uh, this is your root configuration, right? Path admin, load children, load children. When you put load children, that means you are making this model as la lazy loaded, okay? So then the admin, mm -hmm. admin model will become lazy loaded. And when you try to access the admin path, it will download basically this admin module from the backend. But um, because you have this can load uh, guard, it will try to execute this guard first, okay? This authentication guard lazy load service will be executed. Inside that, it will basically execute some code and return true or false, okay? Based on the outcome, uh, it will make a decision whether a uh, user should go to admin uh, section or not. That is the use of can load. And can deactivate is from, uh, for uh, uh, what we talked, right? So basically if you want to uh, navigate away from a page and uh, but user is having unsaved changes, then um, in can activate, uh, can deactivate uh, section, you can basically show that user is having some edits. So how can you use it in the uh, root configuration? Just like any other uh, um, guard, you can use uh, can deactivate. Okay, in the can deactivate place, you can give your can deactivate guard implementation, the, the, uh, the code or the guard information. Okay. And the resolve is for um, loading data a uh, little faster, okay? When you are uh, going to a root, first it will resolve the data or resolve the backend uh, IPA call and get the data, and then it will go to the, uh, the, the root, okay? That is the advantage of uh, resolving. But uh, when you resolve data, the syntax will be little different. The can activate is an array, can deactivate is an array, can load is an array. All these are having the same syntax, right? Uh, the array part. But uh, the, the resolve is having a little different syntax. If you look at here, it is saying resolve, but it's taken object instead of an array. Okay. So object and, and basically it is taking uh, a, a variable. Okay. So inside object, the first field, okay, the first field equals to resolve guard. So how can you basically, uh, okay, I think I did not add that content, but how can I access this uh, uh, data section once it is resolved? Okay, let's say you're navigating from page A to page B and page B needs some uh, data to be loaded fast. So for that use uh, resolve, uh, a guard to fetch that data okay you're good and the data is fetched right uh, data is fetched uh, before going to the root once data is fetched then um, the data must be accessed in the b component right so there you can uh, inject uh, the activated root uh, service and from there you can access this data okay so mm -hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll, I don't have that example ready with me. Otherwise, I would have shown how the syntax will look like. But I'll, mm -hmm. I'll update this content anyhow. Okay. When you go through next time, uh, it will be there. Okay. Okay. So then you'll be able to access that data and display it in your, uh, the B component, right? So that, that way, mm -hmm. uh, it looks uh, faster. Uh, it will not take uh, the one second, two second delay to uh, go and fetch. Okay, before loading to the before going to the component B itself, the data will be resolved, whatever data needed by 
the B component. Okay. So uh, again, uh, the guards we use just to restrict URLs and uh, identify the roles of users, whether they can perform certain actions or not at the root level, right? The, mm -hmm. the, so we can leverage same same thing, same uh, uh, feature given by Angular to uh, authenticate a user, okay? So let's say, if you, if you see this example, this looks complex, but uh, uh, this is our constructor where we injected router and uh, some authentication service we created to identify whether the user is logged in or not, okay? So now inside the can activate method, okay, this is the can activate uh, guard, right? So inside the uh, can activate method, it will take these two parameters, uh, the uh, activated root snapshot and uh, router state snapshot. Basically, it is not taking the activated root itself. It is taking snapshot of that object. Snapshot is a copy of that object, okay? So in, so that's the reason uh, uh, it will not modify the actual existing object, the actuated root surface. And here also we're taking router state snapshot, okay, copied uh, uh, object of the router state. Now here we are accessing the authentication service and we are checking current user value, okay? If user is already logged in, then this variable will basically have the uh, data of that user. Okay, that will come to here. And we'll check whether it is null or uh, undefined or whether it has value. Okay, if it is has value, then it will go into this. If it doesn't have value, then it will go here. So here what we're doing, uh, this will assume that this has some data. That means the user is logged in. So that time what we're saying, navigate user to the, the home page and then return true. Okay, in that case, what will happen? This will be navigated to the uh, root path, okay? Or you don't have to use this one also because whenever you click on the uh, uh, link and wherever you configure this uh, authentication card, right? So the, there, let's say your your uh, user is clicked, clicked on that, clicked on that link and this guard will be executed. And if it has user, then just return true so that it will go to that root by, by default. If, if, if user is not logged in, this will be false. That means it will go to L spot. So L spot, what we are doing, we are navigating user to login page. Mm -hmm. And then uh, returning false. Okay, if it is successful, a user is having already a valid session, then go to the home path. And then if it doesn't have the valid uh, uh, session, then uh, navigate user to the login page. Okay, so I did not add authorization example because authorization is also same. Uh, here we are just getting the user data, right? So this user data will have his roles also. What kind of roles he he holds uh, at that time, and if uh, user having any uh, admin role, then uh, you can send user to. Uh, navigate slash admin it will go to the admin section if user mm -hmm. has uh, a normal uh, user uh, a generic user role then instead of uh, navigating to admin you can send user to um, normal uh, uh, user home page or user profile page something like that okay so there is no difference between um, the authorization and the authentication part because both we will we'll achieve with uh, the, the guards, okay? So without guards, we cannot achieve these things. Uh, only using guards, we can achieve these two. Authorization and authentication. So authentication is checking whether user is logged in or not. Authorization mm -hmm. is user is logged in, but whether he has a particular role to access this page, whether he's admin or whether he's a user or whether it is a uh, 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 faculty, okay, based on the roles, they'll have certain functionalities depend in the application so that uh, only those functionalities will be accessed, okay? This part will make sure of that, but authentication is whether user is logged in at the first place. Okay, so...
okay so we'll cover interceptor part and uh, this http uh, crud operations we'll cover in another session okay okay so interceptor uh, they just ask about how to intercept the request and how to basically add a custom header to uh, my backend api okay the question will be like this uh, i want to add a custom authentication header to my all api calls inside my uh, application so how can i do that so how you can answer is so uh, using interceptor you can basically add any custom headers for the request uh, you can have uh, any number of features in application you will be sending uh, let's say uh, your contract with 10 apis to get data for 10 different features but you want to have a uh, common place to intercept all those requests and then add this authentication header right so in that case you can create an interceptor okay so creation of interceptor is uh, uh, just like the component creation or directive creation right so you can create uh, ng g interceptor and interceptor name uh, i'll have to add that as well here um, once that is created we have to configure that okay so how we can configure um, an interceptor the first thing is interceptor is uh, uh, dependent on this uh, http client module okay so just like http um, client uh, service to make backend calls uh, it will define uh, it will depend on http client module so once you added this done this thing then the first part is done the second part is you have to create an interceptor and once you run that interceptor uh, uh, creation command it will generate all this code okay all this code except except this in implementation okay except this implementation it will basically yeah till here uh, except this part it will create uh, everything else so now what we are uh, doing here this looks complicated but uh, uh, it is easy so first thing is we are cloning that request okay we are taking the request object coming uh, into the intercept method and we are cloning it and after cloning we are adding headers okay header section we are updating header section <clears throat> and we are adding a new header okay request dot headers dot set the authorization author, authorization header this is a header name and this is a value okay this can be a token value some kind of token value and then uh, that that part is done you added successfully authorization header now what you have to do is you have to uh, take this next uh, uh, variable and uh, call the handle method next dot handle and then pass this updated request okay pass the updated request uh, i have to update this one okay pass the updated request and then if it is success then come here if it is error then execute this part okay if it is success then execute this part if it is error execute this part so what we are doing is if it is success uh, the event will be coming here and uh, if you want to show some uh, little toast in your uh, upper right side section or bottom section saying that uh, api call is success or the action performed is uh, successful some kind of generic message for all your api call successful api calls then you can put uh, that code here okay for all your uh, api calls inside your entire application will go through this code now okay for each request the authorization header will be added and then uh, uh, in the success case you will call this section in the error case you will have you will call this section in the error case also you can show the red color uh, toast message saying there is some error occurred can you please try again kind of uh, uh, message okay so this is nothing but a function call um, this is a function call and then this pipe is a function call called till here and then uh, tap means basically pipe means uh, whatever data coming from this handle method pass to the next section so, okay next section is basically this section the tab section tab section is meaning uh, take that request out okay tap that request and check if it is success okay if it is error then uh, uh, call this second section okay so here you can see two sections this is first section 
uh, or first parameter okay just first parameter and this is your second parameter okay in case of success it will call this one in case of error it will call this one is this a generic syntax for uh, interceptor yeah kind of generic syntax for uh, interceptor and why we are calling uh, handle method right so uh, you can have more than one interceptor you can have uh, multiple interceptors let's say you added authorization header here uh, for uh, uh, in your interceptor one and in interceptor two you can add you can add some custom uh, other header okay so there will be two interceptors now so by by calling the next dot handle uh, you are basically passing the same request to the next uh, interceptor. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how we have to call the next dot handle. If you don't have any um, uh, second interceptor also, still you have to call this one. Uh, it will check internally whether there is a, a registered uh, interceptors are there. If there is no registered interceptors. Okay, once you add this injectable, that will be registered, right? Uh, just like service. Uh, it will check uh, how many interceptor you have and if you have more than one interceptors each interceptor will be executed upon that request that single request if you have only single one that single one will be executed and if you don't have any more interceptor left that time it will send the request to the backend server okay till here once you get the response then this part will be executed okay and uh, intercept creation is one part and configuration is second second part in your provider section inside your module okay here is my app module and your module you have to add these three lines so mm -hmm. the provide http interceptors use class whatever uh, interceptor class you want to uh, add here and then multi true multi true means there there might be multiple interceptors okay you're telling an angular explicitly there might be multiple interceptors uh, try to look and uh, execute them okay you have more if you have more than uh, one interceptor you can just copy paste this and uh, um, again uh, configure that name uh, in place of here okay so now uh, if you try to execute this example right so uh, in my app component i injected the http uh, client service and i'm trying to call this api to get some data and uh, uh, basically when you call uh, uh, the the get or post or any other calls uh, with the http service then it will return as a subscribe uh, observable right so we have to subscribe and uh, here i subscribe and in my arrow function I'm just printing HTTP uh, call is success. And in uh, second para first parameter is success parameter. Okay, the, till here, this is success parameter. It's like a, uh, uh, in JavaScript, we pass functions also like a parameter, right? So this is a function as a successful callback. And this is the error callback. If uh, this API returns successful uh, response, then this part will be called in the subscriber and if it is an error case it will go to here so now what will happen in this case we are not calling the interceptor here but because we configured this interceptor so whenever we make this call this this will be executed you can see authorization will be added okay so I think I have that example ready, uh, but let me check if we have it ready. I think we can, yeah, we can show. Okay. So there are actually to explain this code, right? There are like two API calls I'm making. The first API call is going to uh, some uh, some uh, URL and it is trying to fetch the Bitcoin price and it will display here and it will it will display when it was updated last time. Okay. But uh, because I added this custom uh, custom header authorization, the first call is failing. See here, the current price.json is getting some, uh, this is the API URL I'm trying to use. 
it is getting this error because uh, I used the same code which I showed, right? Uh, which will basically add the authorization section. Okay. Ignore that. That is not working. Yeah, yeah. Here, here I have to look at. So I added authorization and the same uh, some dummy code uh, as a token code, but uh, the the API server is returning uh, some error. Okay. But if I try to call the second one, okay, I I want to call the second one. If I click on this, second call will be made. Okay, second call made and data came and we are displaying. And let me see whether we are able to pass the information. The yeah. Here we are passing the authorization header. Okay, so basically both calls are basically uh, uh, we are passing the authorization header, but uh, because we are passing some dummy value as authorization header, first call is fail, but uh, second call is getting success even though we pass some uh, random authorization code. Okay, if you go and see the code. app component okay if you go to app module we can see uh, the intercept is configured here using the the three lines and if i go to this interceptor so the same code will be there okay i added the authorization header here using the clone method i am cloning that uh, request and adding to the uh, the clone one and then uh, i am calling next dot handle okay if we go to app dot module, yeah, we configure here. If you go to app component, in app component, uh, in app component, I'm injecting person service and then Bitcoin price service to make those calls, and uh, I'm injecting here and then uh, here I'm calling the Bitcoin price uh, call in on in it itself. Like when the component is loaded, uh, this call get uh, made, and but it, this is getting uh, error, right? So the first one is getting written, but the second one, uh, once uh, the button is getting clicked, this method will be called. Okay, so we can see that here. Yeah, on click out this button, I'm calling this method get personal data, so person data. And here in the person data, I'm calling uh, the person service dot read person data, and then again subscribing it to it, and then I'm setting persons equal to response. So this persons is basically iterated using the uh, ng for and displaying all the values. Okay, we are getting ten rows and ten rows getting displayed there. Okay, so but with these two uh, API calls. The interceptor is getting called. This intercept is getting called, and this authorization header is getting added. Mm. Okay, so we can change it to uh, some random value also. I just change it. Our code is getting compiled. And let's go to the browser and see. Again, the first call is failed. Because the authorization is again the random value, okay. So the, the server is not accepting. Now, uh, if I click on this one, the second call is made, and second call also we can see somewhere the uh, yeah, here authorization is random value, okay. So basically, we are adding the, the custom header uh, using the interceptor. So, any questions here? Mm -hmm. I'm fine. The code which you showed, no, like, uh, can you update somewhere? Like, send to me somewhere that uh, API calls and that interceptor used. Oh, this code. N not the one. The one which you showed in your uh, this one. Editor. 
Okay, it's the same code, right? So basically here I did not use this part. I just commented this out and you can put, uh, you don't have to use this uh, uh, this thing also. I can, I can remove also from this uh, example. It is confusing. Yeah, I wanted to check like how you use that API cause basically that uh, two APIs. Oh, okay, okay. Um, that one. Um, yeah, I'll 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 add that content here, right? So, uh, okay. that content will be here. So no issues. Okay. 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 Okay then. So I think we we covered uh most of the stuff. Only thing is the uh the CRUD operations in uh, HTTP module, and uh, we are left with the deployment, right? So. And these two things are done. I think Angular is uh, done. Okay. Okay. Let me stop the recording.